Hey everyone, Bones here with a quick word from our sponsor this week. Dawn of War is back to redefine real-time strategy gaming and offer the most fun you can have with Warhammer 40k. Building on 12 years of critically acclaimed gameplay, Dawn of War 3 combines the epic scale of the first Dawn of War with the customization and elite heroes of Dawn of War 2. The result is a best-in-class real-time strategy that offers the rich strategic experience, stunning visuals, and catastrophic surprises that players have come to expect. Dawn of War 3 will be released on April 27th and is available to pre-order now. The open beta will take place from 10 a.m. Pacific Friday, April 21st, until 10 a.m. Pacific Monday, April 24th. Register now at www.donofward.com slash beta. On with the show. All right, all right. Uh, intro, intro this week, guys. Let's, uh, let's think of something fun. What do we got? Uh, Any ideas? Let's, guys, let's go for the laughs. My face is all is all messed up. Can we just like get to the show? What are you talking? Oh, oh my God, birds! You're like leaking. You're leaking bodily yeah. fluids. Gross. Yeah, just it, my face is it's, it's, it's all fucked up. So that's blood. I'll explain. You- it's not supposed to be doing that. I'll, I'll explain. Let's just get to the show. Okay, that's the intro. Oh. Hello, 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 hello. Um, I was gonna ask Swain how he's doing, but uh, <sighs> but uh, birds, how you doing today? <laughs> um, my shit's all fucked up, fam. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, th- th- there's a bit of a story there, but first, uh, I-, I do have the presence of mind to wonder, Swain, how you doing, buddy? Man, <laughs> I may not have. I may not be in the shape you're in, but I am in pretty bad shape too. <laughs> uh, crucible radio beat up. <laughs> <laughs> Very long day. This is the postseason injury stuff as we head up to head to the sequel, <laughs> barely <laughs> scraping it by. Yeah, I'm. I, I'm I don't want to go on IR, but uh, I might have to. <laughs> Stress of the real world. What's IR? Injured the reserve. Sports thing. Oh. Sports thing, okay. <laughs> Jeez. Well, Bones, that leaves you. How you doing, man? Jesus, it's like you guys forget that it needs to go <laughs> all the way around. Uh, I'm actually pretty solid because yesterday I was talking to my girlfriend. I'm like, hey, are we hanging out Friday? And she's like, uh, no, I have to hang out with my mom. And I was like, yes, because my girlfriend is lactose intolerant. means I haven't eaten pizza in a very long time. So <laughs> I ordered a pizza tonight. And then at like 7 pizza o'clock, boy. she calls me and she's like, Hey, are you, I'm like kind of driving past your house. Do you, you're free? You want to get something to eat? And I'm like, no, keep on driving to your house or whatever you need to do. <laughs> there's, a, there's a pizza on the way to my apartment and you're not allowed to see it. And I'm going to eat so much pizza after we record this. <laughs> you can get that, that late night WYD text and you just say, cheese, <laughs> cheese, <laughs> cheese, so much Fucking cheesy everywhere. bread. <laughs> All right. So here's the thing. So, um, I have a, I had, I don't have it anymore. I had a deviated septum. So like my nose didn't work. Like one of my nostrils was mostly shut down and the other is just like totally blocked off. And it's, uh, it kind of messes up a lot of stuff. You don't get good sleep. You're breathing out of your mouth. Thank God for my Casper mattress <laughs> covering the, uh, covering the gap. But like, yeah, you try and run and you're breathing out of your mouth and that's just, yeah, it's no good. It's no good. And uh, I realized, oh, my God, I've got health insurance. I should go see a doctor about this. <laughs> go see this doctor figure. He's like, yeah, your shit's all fucked up, uh, but we can fix it. Give you a new airway. Uh, septoplasty with turbinates. Anyways, six months of coordination go by. Finally get a scheduled. Go in yesterday. First thing in the morning, we left the house at like 430. Get there. Check in. Everyone's went to we went to Cedar Sinai in L.A., which oh, yeah, that's is, where uh, I went. Yeah. Right. Like, that's the kind of thing that you think like, oh, that's just a made up hospital for movies. But it's actually just like a good <laughs> hospital that you should go to if you're in L.A. and your yeah. insurance covers it. It's a good hospital because of the movies. 
<laughs> yep. That is their cred. Um, and it's got a good name, Cedar Sinai. Like that just rolls off the tongue. Um, so anyways, go there and it's like, you know, I, I feel like I'm in good hands. I'll probably be fine, but I'm a little nervous. I've never had general anesthesia before, like all the way under. Never had a breathing tube, which is if you get general anesthesia, yeah, they just put a tube down your throat so you can like not suffocate. And I was like feeling a little nervous, but the the wife was there. She was taking good care of me. Doctors were all nice. Anyways, long story short. Oh, well, I will say this. A um, couple things. So leading into the surgery, um, there's like the nurse who like helps you get changed into the gown. And I change and she's like, oh, you can put your stuff in this locker. Do you need to use the bathroom? And I was like, uh, yeah, I could. And so she grabs my hand and we walk hand in hand down the hall <laughs> towards the bathroom, which I thought was a nice touch. Um and then I got the IV and like all the, the, there's the anesthesiologist, he comes out and talks and then a nurse and then the doctor. And, um, he's like, and then finally it's, it's go time. And he's like, all right, um, I'm going to give you uh, what we call happy juice right now, just to kind of ease you into it. Uh, and then we'll put you under when they're in the operating room. I'm like, all right. And then like, it hits you just like right away. And it's like, oh, this is pretty And they're like wheeling you, but the motion gets all weird. And the last thing I remember is I'm lying in the operating room and I, I look at the anesthesiologist. And I'm like, hey, I'm supposed to be counting right now. And he goes, what? <laughs> I go, I'm going to count 10. And I don't remember anything past that. <laughs> um, nice. And so and so like and I was I was reading about it because I was a little nervous. Um, and then it like people say it's like it's it's like a flight. Like you just you just take off and you're up in the air. And then I guess it's maybe not like a flight, but like, yeah, you just go to sleep and then you wake up no sense of the time kind of like a flight when you you get on you fall asleep they take your organs you wake up exactly (laughs) you wake up with a a cup of undrank diet coke in your hand and all of your organs are missing yeah sounds about right (laughs) next thing i remember i'm uh i'm i'm back in the 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 recovery room and there's like five nurses all over me hanging on to me and they're all like, like trying to stop me. And I'm just yelling, give me some water. Give me some water. I see that water. Over there. And they kind of come to, I'm like, no, I'm, I'm lucid. I'm lucid. What's happening? And they're like, oh, are you, are, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, yeah. Oh, just please give me some water. What is going on? And they're like, well, you have been fighting everyone for the past 15 minutes. I'm covered in cuts and bruises. Apparently I got myself halfway out of the bed. I was thrashing around like everyone was happy to have me back because I was the most violent person coming out of general anesthesia they've ever experienced. <laughs> I was worried I was going to say like reveal some incriminating secret about myself in the uh that twilight haze of coming out of drugs, but apparently no, I just, just get super, super violent. violent. <laughs> just yeah. start moshing. But, but, but you'll, you'll get this, uh, this reference. I I'm imagining birds waking up from, uh, anesthesia and, uh, the song murder train starts playing all aboard the murder train. <laughs> and he starts like wailing nurses and stuff. <sighs> uh, wow. That's insane. Yeah, they were all super nice to me after I stopped uh, trying to hit them, and they did give me some water. But like, hey, like the the it's 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 wild. Like it used to be, you get your deviated septum fix, and you just have gauze packed up into your nose for a week. I got it out this morning, twenty four hours later. Quite nice. Um, but it like yeah, it kind of sucks. Like you can't breathe through your nose whatsoever for a day, and it's just constantly leaking blood, and so. I had the worst night's sleep last night and was just like zonked out on painkillers and then get to uh, get back to the doctor. He takes it out. It felt so good to like because like that gauze is packed way up in there. So it just feels like your head is flipping inside and out. Pulls it out. and He's like, all right, breathe through your nose. And I like I haven't even tried it. And I do it. I can breathe through my nose, both nostrils. And he's like, you got a good airway now. <laughs> you got that's an awesome we airway. Do up, fam. Yeah, no, my, th- this doctor is great. Um, <laughs> he also said, uh, "I'm gonna give you a, I'm gonna give you something to uh, help you feel a bit better." Now, snort. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's blow. Sylvia picks it up on the way from LAX every morning. <laughs> it's like he's, he's he's got all the doctor bits. Um, but yeah, now I'm I'm basically good. I can breathe, but like my nose is full of stitches, and um, I just 
blow a bunch of blood out of it once every 15 minutes or so. But I should be back in action in a couple of days. So, And you're here. It's worth it. I think I'll, I'll say it was worth it. Welcome to Crucible Radio, the podcast for all things Destiny PvP. PvP, player versus practitioner. (laughs) Now, Bird, say something about Destiny immediately (laughs) to to get Um, us on track here. So I got, finally, did the the grunt work of getting my Warlock up to 400. Um, Thank you, Banner, for giving me that last freaking ghost that was that was holding me back. Anyways, got him up to 400 and uh, he's got his own gear and like I've played a ton of Warlock, but it's been a while. The the thing I was most excited to do was to play on Sunsinger, high uh, uh, discipline strength with Tlaloc and just sit on my super and just run double stickies, which is fun. Like I'm still not used to like the throw of stickies and, and just sort of that guaranteed landing of them, but realizing like, I don't, I don't know. It's been too long. I don't really know what's good in the warlock world. So I'm hoping you guys can kind of tell me what's up. I don't know anything about warlocks. <laughs> <laughs> well, sun singers are not exactly what's good in the warlock world, despite uh, stickies being pretty consistent. And I guess they have their place, especially with the strength of that grenade going up a little bit. Uh, it is, I was actually talking to another friend who had kind of done the same thing. and was just talking about, uh, stat splits like what what i run stat splits wise and he's like what do you run for sunsinger and i was like well i don't um and i was just look, remembering how sunsingers used to be so incredibly powerful with the grenades and i kind of had kind of reminisced about firebolts you know yeah. from that perfect year one that had nothing wrong and everyone loved it and would love to go back <laughs> uh yeah but uh well well before we get to there swain you use fusions on your sunbreaker what am i i feel like i sh- I'm usually wasting them if I throw them, but I can't see the enemy. Like I've got to get that line of sight to line it up. Is there more to it than that? Like, what am I doing wrong? So are you trying to just go for like blind shots? Is that what you're saying? Or are you I just, just wanna, trying I just not want to stick people <laughs> without trading basically. Gotcha. Um, mostly it comes down to anticipation. Um, we talked about baiting people the other day. Uh, it's the same thing works with grenades too. Um, if you can kind of get a a beat on where they actually are on the map and then kind of make them come to you, whether it's, you know, um, strategic uh, running around, kind of peeking out, let them see you and then running and pulling them into your trap. That's always great. Um, but a lot of times I use it to uh, as I'm flying in as like to hopefully get some sort of uh, some a good push. So I'll, you know, I'll toss one into the group or try to anticipate where a person is going and just like throw it at that direction. Um, blind throwing is, is different. Obviously uh, you kind of need to know your map, need to know where someone might be and you want to throw a sticky where they might be. Yeah. I was like, like throwing stickies into the uh, like the party room on Twilight Gap, like you get the contact, and there was a couple where like I got the one twenty or so, but you really have to stick them for them to work, right? Like they just don't do enough damage. Oh on no, their own. yeah. They're, otherwise, they're just the worst. They don't even do burn the burn damage. Yeah. All right. Well, more practice there, or maybe just stop playing Sun Singer. Sorry, Bones. Continue. <laughs> Uh, you know, I was I've been playing a lot of Hunter since uh, the special ammo change because I think Gunslinger is in a great spot and I love all the extracurriculars. But speaking of extracurriculars, now that there's not a shotgun in your face like 99% of the time, I've found the Voidwalker melee, but the Warlock melee in general, to be a really, really strong tool. And I notice it when I'm playing on a Titan or a Hunter. And it, it's just... it finishes up kills and with a little bit more range than the Titan, it packs a huge punch. And I love right now finishing people off who try to hide and cover. And I know like if I get like two good shots on them and their shields down that all I have to do is jump over and I can find it with the, with the aim assist and really comfortable range where I'm not going to get smacked back because they can't see me just coming over the top and smacking them in the head. Voidwalkers can do so much damage plus get a little, lifesteal back from that and it's it's just like the way to go to play aggressive these days when when you can't quite 
uh, push into a room full of people and clean them up with a shotgun. And Juggernaut has come down a little bit. I, I just feel like Void Walker is such the way to go when you just want to smack people around and get up close and play with a hand cannon and a shotgun setup or a hand cannon and a sidearm. So uh, would you say when you're playing Warlock these days, are you mostly doing Voidwalker or are you doing, are you doing the uh, Stormcaller as well? I switch so much. Like I can't, I can't settle on anything. I think I felt really good with Storm when shotguns were good, but now when I'm playing on Storm, uh, I don't, I don't utilize the melee nearly as much. Uh, it's a great finishing move, like I said, but it used to be just like the primary kind of, not the, not the primary weapon, but you know, I, I'd focus my play style around that. And now I feel like that's a little risky to, to, to put so much emphasis on the melee as opposed to situational kill. So the Void Walker really is, it's, it's kind of nice. It's like if I'm on my Warlock and I'm running a uh, Void Walker, it's a very return to, to my old self as the, as the first subclass I started on. I, I just think it's got the best all around kit right now. And Aphidian aspect with the enhance gift of the void and the surge and, and all that. Like it, it is an incredibly powerful setup, even though quick draw is gone. I'm just happy to have you know, convenient reload speed across all weapons. I'm not switching up my gear. Every time I switch a primary weapon, I feel comfortable using any, any weapon with my void Walker. And it's just like the health return and the grenades. If you get a grenade kill, it's really tough to compete with that. The only thing, giving you more grenades in a game is probably the frosties, which is the other thing I use. So yeah, void Walker kill with a, a Axion bolt, giving you a free grenade after that is really awesome for, for how many sixes I'm playing right now. One thing that kind of surprised me because we were playing the other day and I was on void Walker and my sort of go-to for that last, last column was always embrace the void because I figure like Axion bolt is your main grenade. You're doing so much work with it. Why not get the the sort of extra range on it, the little more reliability? But you said use embrace the void. Mm-hmm. Is that have you changed that up over over time, or are you pretty much set on that? I've had that set for a long time. I think even before Aphidian Aspect, and then Aphidian Aspect made that the absolute must. The reason I changed is because uh, the first perk you mentioned enhances the seeker uh, on the Axion Bolt, so you can. And people are familiar with how long you have to run away from that. Sometimes it's uh, sometimes on par with like a skip grenade that just won't leave you alone. But that being said, it's very easy to escape that if you're committed to running away. And nowadays, especially in uh, in a lot of lobbies I run into, is people are just really uh, really familiar with uh, basically neutralizing those grenades either with shade step, which is a really common tactic, or just sliding into it. So. You see the Axion, you check to make sure if it's if it tagged you. You have so much time to determine that. Unlike the Firebolt, which just shoots you with fire, you get to see if that one's coming for you or going for your friend. So you go, all right, that sure. one's coming for me. You back up a few feet, and then you slide into it, and it really reduces the damage to the point where you're, you feel fine going into a gunfight with just like a slight sliver off of your health. So you still get grenades when someone's backed up or they're weak enough. You'll get grenade kills, but... I'd rather get the free grenade back than just really, really hope that that thing chases them and, and officially kills them. And on Voidwalker, you're always running a Fidian aspect. That's the go-to now. Yeah. I have not taken that exotic off since I got it Uh, in the, in the, I got it from the wrath of the machine. When we opened the container on the day that the outbreak prime quest happened, you get an exotic engram for that. And we went to the tower during one of those steps and I was like, I got it finally. Equipped, have not removed it. Um, well, even on even on storm color, honestly, yeah, most of the time, I, I yeah, I, I don't, I don't think I ever change. Sometimes I have like an all legendary setup. I'll run up on uh, on storm if I'm really trying to max out the intellect strength loadout. But at this point, I don't mind extra grenades and uh, supers. A super, you're gonna get it a few times in a six sixes match, anyways. Uh, maybe in trials, I'd be a little more little more focused uh, but yeah is it's just it's just the way to go it's the way to go when you've got fast melee grenade toss and fast reload it, it is basically like having the perfect uh arm 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 gear whatever hand, grips arms 
punches, gauntlets, gauntlets you know, yeah. those things. Green hand baskets. Okay, so two more questions then. Uh, Stormcaller, are you ever switching the claws or are you just relying on that high strength to do it? Yeah, high strength. I still get fast melee on Ophidian. Claws are perfectly viable. Um, a while back, uh, that's what I was using pretty much exclusively, but then they reduced the range a little bit. And there's a slight buggy thing with the claws where sometimes both charges are used. So you get a melee off and then suddenly you realize like, oh, I had two stacks. So it's kind of like neutralized the only exotic ability mm. there. So it's certainly viable to run if you have a, a good build with it. It helps your stat split and and you're using the melee and you like playing up close. But yeah, it became it became not worth it compared to just the passive perks of the Ophidian. And then finally on the storm caller, which of these garbage grenades am I supposed to be using? <laughs> Honestly, I switch back. It's like whatever. Storm the storm thing can be really good if you just want to shut down an area. It's it might be better for for trials if you're uh kind of a spatial player and you're just all it about It works really well with uh, is it arc web? Yeah, yeah, for cause trials because you, you you just throw it into a corner and you hit one and it just like starts the chain. Yeah, so it might not give you the maximum damage on the grenade itself, but you do get the chain to proc because it has that sort of wide area of effect. I think I'm running arc bolts right now just just for the consistency of maybe getting more damage and then, like I said, pushing up and knowing I can finish. It's like it's not a great grenade, but at least it signifies a, a known amount of damage rather than the storm where I don't know if I hit him for a lot or I, maybe I saw like a 13 in there and I'm not really being able to track that. So it's it's whatever. I, I run a four two five split most of the time or a five one five. So emphasis not on the grenades. Yep. Either way, I'm glad to uh glad to see you coming over to the the void lock and the warlock subclass. Yeah, you know it's it's I'm still not quite used to the jump. Um like I feel like I got the surf down but just running minimum agility and just not having much vertical height at all is taking a bit of adjustment. And then I just miss shade step so much, just like <laughs> that perfect panic button to get you out of any mess. Um, <laughs> but I'm enjoying it. Yeah. I, once I get one more ghost, I'll be able to get, why is it always the ghost? I didn't get like, I got one thrall banner. Oh, yeah. Uh, ghosts whatever. and artifacts. I, I forgot that that was like a thing. Like there was a, there was a couple patches where they said, hey, we're going to give you artifacts and more encounters, and they increase the drop rates in the forge, and now I'm kind of messing out around with my alt for an hour a week, and I'm like, why don't I, how don't I get my light up? Oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> like, this Iron Banner, like, they, they, it was by default artifact. I literally got 12 or 13 400 artifacts over yeah, getting yeah, my hunter up bit. to five. Mm-hmm. But anyways, once I get that last ghost, I'm going to be able to get my, uh, be able to get my Titan up to 400, get this warlock thing figured out, switch over to him, keep changing it up. Yes. Um, yeah, I need to find something. Uh, I enjoyed the, the fun place build so much on Titan, but like, I need to learn how to play Sunbreaker. Mm-hmm. I need to know. I never figure that hammer out. So Swain <laughs> next week, I'm going to have questions. <laughs> I'll be ready. Birds experiences at all. <laughs> for the first time in destiny <laughs> well I mean, for, for, for the fair it's like the second or third time but i've completely forgotten everything i learned the first two times around i, so. I have noticed that my super usage across the subclasses gets worse like i feel like the neutral game especially since that's happening constantly uh sticks with me, me more so when i switch to night stalker i'm i don't suddenly start throwing wombo combos in the wrong order or something like that but for instance my golden gun aim it was terrible when I started playing Gunslinger and I had to switch back to the perk that gives better accuracy. And I felt like ashamed that I, I used to use the one that's just like more cooldowns. Yeah. Cause I hit every shot. Why not get more super? And I'm like, no, I need the help now. I'm, I'm missing shots that I shouldn't same with the hammers. Like I switch over to hammers and I'm tossing them and I go, Oh, I, I didn't kill anyone there. That's embarrassing. Yeah. All right. Well, I got what I'm working on. What else is going on in the, uh, in the destiny world? We get anything in the, in the TWAB this week? I was yeah. out of commission on Thursday. We got a teeny little twab. Uh, all of the raids are <laughs> out. Hey, I got weld fire. Now the wrath of the machine Ooh. is out. I have won the game. It is complete. <laughs> I have completed destiny. I have the rarest shader in the game. Weld fire club. Let's go. Um, but actually there was a little hot poor fix. man's king spire. No, no, a rich man's king spire. No, Boom. no, a, 
it's it's for rich people. I'm I'm rich in uh accomplishment. Mm. Yeah, that uh, that challenge mode clear was satisfying. That was the one I hadn't done. So now I think I uh, finished my my raid booklet. No, I got to go kill those stupid Gorgons. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> there was a hot fix and uh, nothing huge, but it definitely fixed uh, something that was driving. Everyone was insane. And it's funny that we have uh, our guests this week because I'm sure they were getting all types of tweets about it. But the uh, the constant notification from your record book that was caused oh. by the API saying multiple records and you're like, no. And then you scroll through all 13 pages that is fixed. It's like, no, so much. Um, what's the term? Um, misplaced excitement. Uh, <laughs> you're like, I'm really cranking through this. Yeah. I can't wait to click it. Oh, no actual exclamation point. <laughs> yeah. And then, Hey, that, uh, the, uh, that trials self res bug. They did yeah. It. Yeah. That, oh, that was God. a <laughs> well, interesting thing. It's, it was funny to me seeing on Twitter about people like, been in this game for an hour and i'm like why don't you leave but uh i understand <laughs> you don't want to just give up on a game i forget yeah what what listener asked us um uh, but we got a question from a listener on twitter that says when you get into that into that glitch mode uh what etiquette uh, dictates which team should leave first and i didn't respond because it's like uh whichever team doesn't mind losing the round yeah um, <laughs> yeah my answer just to that would be fix it bungo yeah if it's four zero or or like four one like just take the loss and, and assume that you might not have an epic comeback. If you're confident that you will, whatever, argue it out. But I assume if it's a drastic lead, if it's split down the middle and it's not ending, uh, message the people and say, hey, if you guys use your mercy, maybe they have, maybe they haven't, maybe you haven't. And so the team that has their mercy on can say, all right, well, we'll take the mercy. I would do that. Uh, I've played enough trials where I'm not going to cry if that's the end of my run but I, I would assume the mercy would would go i would have just started a new card i would have been like all right fine what instead of waiting in this game for an hour i'd rather just keep playing well yeah get more drops than just desperately hoping that's the one yep say if, if, if you're like hey it's game nine and we used our mercy and they're like oh we still have ours then yeah give them that trip to the lighthouse be be a, be a good sport be a bro good sport but yeah, that's uh, that's all there is this week. We've got a fun interview coming up with this really, really cool feature uh, that I am excited for. Uh, before we get to that, we have another sponsor this week. This week, our sponsor is Gamefly. Ooh, Gamefly. I have got to ask you guys a question. In that case, are you ready to save money and play more games? Yes. Well, I like those things. Yeah, you bet you do. Then let me introduce you to our sponsor, Gamefly. It's the best way to buy and rent all your favorite games. At Gamefly.com, just pick your favorite games and they'll have them mailed directly to your door. So Gamefly is the leading video game rental service. They've got over 9,000 titles to choose from. Let's you try your favorite games and movies before you buy them. And uh, you can keep the games as long as you want. You'll never have to worry about late fees and you can cancel any time. Like I said before, they offer movie rentals too now, guys. So it's easy. You can do it right now. Just go to Gamefly.com slash Crucible and that'll start your free premium 30 day trial today. It's going to allow you to check out two games and or movies at any time. You can only get this offer by visiting Gamefly.com slash Crucible. So go sign up and start playing all your favorite games absolutely free for 30 days. You can't beat it. Free. Gamefly.com slash Crucible. Crucible. All right, guys. All right. Let's hear those tunes because right now there's this pause between segments where we break it up and beautiful sounds fill your ears. Uh, yeah. from Musical break. Musical break. There, there it is. That's, that's what's happening. All right. Music this week from Victor Silderholm from Sweden, old favorite of ours. Keep on putting out those good tracks. Go check him out at soundcloud.com slash Victor with K Silderholm. Hey, link in the show notes. Go look there. If you're a musician, we want to hear some music. Send us some MP3s to crucibleradio at gmail.com. 
And if you'd like your gameplay featured in the YouTube version of our show, just upload a match to YouTube. No, no montages, no clips, just a whole match. Pick a good one and send us an email with that YouTube link to crucibleradioclips at gmail.com. Welcome back, everyone, and uh, this is the part of the show where we have wonderful guests on and we talk to them about what they're doing, Destiny. Uh, this week, we have two very special guests, you know, not a, not big streamer names, but you use these applications and these websites pretty much every day if you're a Destiny player. Uh, Goose and Zorth, welcome, guys. Welcome to the show. Hey, thank you. Uh, thank you. So obviously I teased it a little, but uh, you guys want to take turns. Tell us a little bit about what you do in the Destiny community and uh, let let these people know uh, how much they should be praising you. <laughs> how much they need you. Yeah. <laughs> Zorth, if you want to go first. Uh, sure. I'm the uh, owner and creator of Destiny Tracker. And we started that uh, right before the, the beta of the Destiny 1. And we just do stats, leaderboards, tools, LFG, all kinds of fun stuff. So um, that's what we've been working on since then, and obviously we're excited for the future for Destiny 2. Yep, and I'm Goose. Uh, I'm one of the maintainers of Destiny Item Manager. And you know what we try to do is help you get the best gear on so you're ready to play the Crucible. Nice. So uh, you guys must be uh, pretty relieved today with the, uh, the fix that everybody's been dealing with <laughs> the multiple records fix. Well, you don't like knowing every time we ping your data. <laughs> it, it's, it's actually, uh, it gave me a little bit of an insight to like, Oh my God, this is like, this takes a lot, a lot of, a uh, lot of time goes into making sure that this, like I'm constantly updated in dim. And I'll mm-hmm. always have just like a little window on one of my monitors with it open, dragging things over <laughs> or moving things around no one wants to remember back year one. <laughs> no, of course not. And in, in this this period now that we've had where you get the multiple records ping, I mean, it is in one way uh, interesting because players now understand, you know, we ping your data every five minutes to synchronize our UI. And we've never really had much of a way of getting information into Destiny. Like we could transfer an item and have it pulse, you know, like we could have moved... Uh, three of coins over to your character to remind you to use three of coin. You know, there's things you can do. Um, but yeah, it was kind of like an interesting uh, experiment into, you know, in-game notifications that Dim is, you know, doing stuff. You're always there. <laughs> we try to. <laughs> so Zorth, uh, Destiny Tracker might actually be one of the reasons I'm here right now doing Crucible Radio. Because back in, I think... February, March, or April of year one, I decided to look up stats and I literally searched, I think like destiny stats. And I just, you know, I was so out of the loop. I didn't, I wasn't, uh, you know, all over Twitter and everything like that. And I'm like looking up my, I find my stats on destiny tracker and I'm like, Oh cool. I'm in like the top 2% for most kills in a game. And I felt really amazing about that. And then like, now I think I'm in like the top 30% because everyone else has done better than me. But anyways, uh, that moment was really when I was like, Hey, this is kind of cool to be able to see what I can do online. And, and if I'm better than other people and I, I kind of got that competitive edge all of a sudden and started playing the crucible a lot, but what brought you to destiny tracker I and mean, what's your background with, uh, with other video games? Was it just something you're interested in? Are you just a numbers guy or what, uh, what, what's the, how did uh, destiny tracker get started? Yeah. Well, first of all, thanks for saying that. It's a, it's an honor, and I get a lot of joy out <laughs> yeah. of people finding our stuff and uh, getting a good use out of it. So that's great to hear. Uh, I started back in the Halo Three days, and I was very competitive, maybe too competitive. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is familiar. Doesn't mean I was good. It just means I was competitive. And yeah. 
I played key distinction. I played Halo Three ranked every night, and I had a negative KD, and I struggled to go up. And I would, you know, each day I go into work and I get my coffee and I check my stats, and I would go through on the Bungie website, you know, what they had, uh, how was mm-hmm. I doing, uh, what could I improve on. But it w- it wasn't giving me everything that I needed in the way I needed it. So I made Halo Tracker. That's how I got started. Um, I started downloading everyone's games and so you could go through and process all the games. And so you could get a lot more uh, high level detail. And I found patterns and things like maybe on this map, the red team wins more and stuff like that. So I, I tried to like just overanalyze things. And eventually I did get my KD up a little bit. And so it did help to be, you know, understanding my stats at that level. Mm-hmm. And I just fell in love at that point. And that's what I uh, started pouring all of my extra time into was, putting it into the Halo site. And then when obviously Bungie announced Destiny, that was like, uh, I think maybe two years was when they announced it before it came out. And I basically made a homepage for Destiny Tracker. I bought the domain, made a homepage, and then I was just waiting, just twiddling my, my <laughs> fingers. So, I mean, uh, that's how I got into it. And now I'm um, just addicted. So that's my life now. Yeah, I'm, I mean, really, it is it, it is a, a motivator, and it's not to say like, oh, I can see who's good, so I'm going to be the best. I mean, I, I'm I'm realistic, but it is something to to play for. And in a game where you can't really check uh, what grimoire you're missing by turning on your PS4, and you can't see who's better than you, and you can't see anyone's stats, it really does help you um, fill in the blanks when you just want to play Destiny, but you're feeling a little aimless, and that's definitely what happened for me. So it, it's it's helpful on so many different levels, including just figuring out where you can get better. So it's really awesome. Yeah, I mean, I, I think people find certain stats that they want to latch onto. I, I know myself; I, all my stats are pretty bad, except for I'm kind <laughs> of a top percentile for like average kill distance being like a long number because I was a sniper for a long time. So like that was the kind of the stat that I mm-hmm. honed in on. I'm like every game, get the sniper, try to get some long kills, keep getting that number up and up and up. It's just kind of a silly goal. But that's what I was into. <laughs> so that's it's nice yeah. to have. So it ends up being your own little mini game inside of Destiny. I think like <laughs> I, I think when I checked, I was like not really like too big and you know not. I wasn't too high up in many categories when I first started checking, but. uh Interesting enough, it was like most orbs dropped, and I found that fun. Like it was like, oh wow, I'm I'm pretty efficient with my super. I think <laughs> there, you go, there you go. Yeah, it, it's 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 little things like that, and you like you always see people like like Reddit threads every pop up every once in a while. I'm like I'm the top one percent in suicides, and then all of a sudden, like a, I'm sure a spike in your website usage goes up, and it's like, oh, everybody's checking to see what weird stat they're they're. Uh, <laughs> They're the best in. <laughs> yeah, I thought the orbs generated statistic was, you know, one of the most interesting ones as well. Like, you know, I never would have thought, like, that was data available in the API. <laughs> well, I guess, like, it, it, is that because it shows up in, like, the kill f- the kill feed area that it's trackable? Yeah, there. I mean, their API has um, all kinds of data. So that's one that, you know, when I was going through, I kind of picked up on. I think my initial reaction was to add the total ones, and I think I later realize it's like per game is probably more interesting. So uh, move towards that. But that's, you know, that's just kind of a measurement of how effective you are with your team on your yeah. uh, supers. So oh, I need to know how many big orbs and little orbs I make though. <laughs> let's, let's get detailed. All right. Yeah. Let's be specific here. Is this like a Telesto double kill orb or did I get a super kill? <laughs> yeah. I can't see that. Sorry guys. I'll put that in for the, maybe Destiny 2 Shucks. API will have that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll, 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 a lot of hopes for the sequel. That's definitely really up high on our priorities. Is is uh, the clarification of orb size? Well, I, mean, I, I, I got a question. I mean, <laughs> what, what, what are you looking for uh, in in maybe the next revision of the API? I mean, what data do you want that you don't get now? Uh, that's kind of a tough question. I think right now we we get access to so much. Um, I think the one thing that I would I would ask for right now to Bungie is. Like, give me the ability to send you more filters and parameters so I could say, like, um, like they, give, they give us some. So it's like you can get the last seven days or the last month. Uh-huh. Like, I want to really like, fine, fine-tune that to say, like, you know, give me the last uh, 30 days, this map, this KD. Yeah, more queries. And mm-hmm. Yeah, and have Bungie do the, 
the hard work of crunching that instead of me having to download all the games and figure that out for the player. <laughs> oh, and the second thing is too yeah. is uh, you can see what what the gun types that you used. So like I used a sidearm or a sniper. I want to see more stats towards the actual gun that you had and you used. Goose with the with the good questions, oh. making a, a strong <laughs> hey, case hey, for a co-host here. No, <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a vested interest in the data and the API. <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah. But uh, so you guys come from two different, uh, well, obviously two different, uh, an application and a website here in the Destiny community. But we did bring you both on for a reason. Like we're not just like, oh, here, let's get some guys who make some some apps and you know websites on the show. Uh, you guys are working together on a project. You want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, definitely. You know, take uh, it. I, sure. The, um, <clears throat> well, you know, Destiny Tracker has incredible analytics. Um, and so we've been thinking for a while, like how can we get together and deliver some of that content, you know, through dim in a way that's beneficial for the user. And what we uh, ended up with was an idea of weapon rankings which is something we've been trying to reach for a while. Um, the goal we have is to just let players know if they have a really good weapon in their vault, you know, something that they've carried for a while but haven't looked at. You know, there's some, you know, I have a, I have personally, I have a God roll Hawksaw that I carried for two months and didn't know, you know, <laughs> and I now live by that weapon. Like that's, I, I, yep. I love my Hawksaw. And if I hadn't, spent like two evenings kind of going through all my stuff, getting ready for a big cleaning event, you know, I wouldn't have found it. It might've just been, you know, wasted, uh, you know, into Or even into d- dismantled when you dropped it. Yeah. 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 Dropped for you. Exactly. Exactly. And so, uh, destiny tracker is going to be doing a lot of, uh, analytics on data. We'll be capturing through dim from users. Uh, we'll be, uh, asking users to essentially rate the weapons that they have and submit that to destiny tracker. And they'll be doing the number crunching on their side and then giving us uh, a report for every user. When you, when you turn on dim of how well your weapons uh, ra- you know, stack up with their particular talent grids, with their roles. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you'll see currently right now, the ideal is a one through five rating with five being the highest. And sure. then you can see on your UI, just like we do for armor, where it's like a red lowest to blue red, kind of uh, diamond, yeah. you know, highest. Uh, we'll do the same thing for weapons. Uh, but the ranking is decimals one through five. Um, so 3.344, 3, you know, things like that. And then you can actually click on an icon in the pop-up uh, box for an item that'll take you to a, deg- a discussion panel. And you can see reviews that are highly ranked from... Uh, notable personalities like Fallout and Mercules, for example, are going to be working Ooh. with us to provide their considerable knowledge on weapons. Uh, initially focused on PvP ranking, um, mm-hmm. uh, that's the that's the place that we're going to for this first version. And sure. um, but we'll also be taking feedback from everyday players. You know, what do they think works well for them? Pros and cons, and a little bit of discussion. And so we'll take all of these feedback, all this rating, and we'll be doing some analysis and waiting on it uh, and then producing a number uh, for, for, for particular roles. Um, and if, you know, you'll have weapons that are unranked, which means they're probably not useful. No one's useful. <laughs> <laughs> you know? People may not have taken the time to rank them. But, you know, if you like that weapon, submit a rank, you know, give sure. us your opinion, you know. Uh, but you'll find, mm. I, I expect to find uh, more often, you'll see weapons ranked four, five, you know, the things that people like to use. Um, and, and so I don't expect them to turn into a Christmas tree. <laughs> yeah, I, I expect you to see, <laughs> you know, you look across, you're like, okay, I got a, some good ones. And then you might be surprised to find a couple of, you know, God rolls inside your your collection. And that's the goal. Some... We, we really just want to serve players that are not on Reddit all the time. You know, they, they, they don't visit, you know, Crucible Playbook you know, weekly to figure out what's sure. going on. The idea is like you empower users so that they can be more competitive passively, right? You know, that they see that they have a good weapon and they put it on and they might be more capable now than they were before because the reload is quicker. 
one of the things we get all the time is someone that just like will send a, a picture on Twitter. <laughs> is this gun good? Or this dropped for me last night. Like how, like, is this a God roll? And it's like, um, and then you have to be like, well, what is that stat? Like, yeah. I can't see what is yeah. it. It's one of the up down arrows. Is it counterbalance or is it perfect? Yeah. Uh, I mean, um, <laughs> yeah. So now I could just be like, hey, just uh, open up dim, like take a look, see what's what's the rating. Do you do you enjoy it? You know, you should rate it as well. Um, this will also be great for uh, telling people uh, to clean out their vaults. Yep. Oh, yeah. My <laughs> take favorite. a look at your vault. <laughs> do you have a lot of uh, never one one ranked uh, guns in there? Maybe you shouldn't use it. <laughs> <laughs> and it's really important to point out. I mean, this is our first iteration on this. You know, we don't know if it's going to work, right? We're, we're, we're trying mm, it. Sure. You know, this is our approach we're taking for this first kind of stab at it. I mean, there's there, there's so many influences and in weapon rankings that are personal, you know? I mean, oiled frame versus small bore, you know, like all these. So it's not going to be an absolute ranking like our armor stat, that quality ranking we get because of, um you know, the stats are numerical. And this is mm-hmm. not... A perfect science. So, you know, I expect to be saying, I expect there to be some tweets like, why is this ranked a five? You know? <laughs> well, yeah. Know. I got explosive rounds on my IS Luna and I swear it's good. I swear. <laughs> you don't need a rifled barrel. So on the, on the flip side, uh, we're going to update our, our database on Destiny Tracker to, uh, when, when you go to view the weapons, you know, show those same reviews that you can see on DIM and then also have like a, like a leaderboard of you know, the best ranked guns, the worst ranked guns. This this data will be um, messed with when patches come out. So, like, mm-hmm. as there's patches and there's new metas and stuff like that, we'll be able to track all that stuff. What are people using? What rules are they using? So I think it's going to give some insight to people who, uh, you know, don't know which guns to use. I'm kind of – I've experienced both sides of this. So uh, when Destiny came out for the, in, the, in the following year, I was on Reddit every day. I read everything. I knew everything. But as, you know, it's things kind of drawn out, I couldn't keep track of all the different uh, changes that were being made all the time. And there'd be periods mm-hmm. of time where I'd be playing Destiny and I, I did not know, you know, is this gun good or not? And so and I had I actually had real life friends who uh, have complained about this and, and some even quit the game. Not just because the the weapon they don't understand, but like they didn't have the time to invest on Reddit or something to know what they have and know how to play the right. game, what they should yeah. be doing. So we're trying to kind of put this in front of them. Um, and Dim's going to be kind of the um, proactive way and DTR is going to be kind of the reactive way where you can go and you can research and whatnot. But with Dim, it's going to be right there in front of you. So it's going to be, I think a powerful tool for people. I nice. really like that because it's going to help. Uh, it's going to help on multiple fronts because you know right now if you go to Destiny Tracker, I love this section that you guys have sort of like the current meta, right? And that's really just a list of uh, the the weapons with a higher usage percentage. So IS Luna and Icebreakers is sitting up there. Uh, but when it comes to IS Luna, someone can go, okay, IS Luna is what everyone's using. I got one of those. What do I need on it? And there's no way to find that out right now. So this is going to let people go. Oh, cool, rifled barrel. And hidden hand and rangefinder, God, it seems to seems to be like anyone with this gun gives it a five. But on the other side, it helps so much in uh, to to have that stat in front of you, uh, or for for conversations about it. Because I, I was joking about it earlier a second ago, but you know, someone tells me and they're like, "I hear you, Bones. You you give me some good advice, but I swear this scout rifle, this high impact scout rifle, oh boy, I love it." And I'm just like. Um, all, right, all right, like I, I can't pr- prove you otherwise. <laughs> if they go on their, if they go on their destiny item manager and that gun has, you know, has a three point two, I can say, I, I mean, I kind of told you. So it, it's, uh, it does a lot for people <laughs> to have that number and say, oh, all right, that's fair. I, you know, this gun has this rating. I can work with that. People like numbers. And I think you know these won't necessarily. You, you can't compare an IS Luna to a Mida. I think you know the, the ratings sure. will not right. be. The, well, I think the, they'll uh, be within the archetype. That's what. That's like the fruit space thing. That's like what the the guys at Bungie are having trouble with. Like, yeah, they, we've got these bars that measure range and they measure, you know, uh, the uh, reload speed and all that. But like, it's for every weapon, <laughs> and the fruit yeah. space definitely doesn't help them out there. Yeah. Um, 
Yep. So that's that's the goal. I mean, we just really want to make a lot of players more competitive. I mean, you know, they still have to aim the gun, you know, <laughs> yeah. but we want to make sure that they're they're just they're definitely more competitive. And you combine that with our, our loadout builder and being able to make, you know, T12 loadouts with reload perks for your specific archetypes and helmets with longer grenade range or, you know, throw distance. You know, we our our, our goal for DIM is just really to enable the player to be better passively and then mm-hmm. let them work on their skill. So uh, when are you guys looking to uh, release said features? We want to roll it out into the beta within a week or two. So probably by the end of the month, definitely. Um, uh, yeah, in the month, I think, is our, our current deadline that we're really yeah. shooting for sooner for maybe a beta. A beta. Nice. Is, is that beta open to the public? Can, they, yes. can someone who's listening right now try and jump in and help you guys out? Definitely. You can go to beta.destinyitemmanager.com. Uh, com and that's our our website um our chrome extension we do have a beta version of it that is available Ooh. um if you go to destiny item manager.org i mean dot com uh the, there's there's a link to the beta extension sometimes it breaks because it is a beta <laughs> <laughs> pardon our dust right yes definitely uh, but if you use that you definitely get the latest and greatest from us we have a lot of things going on and a lot of things we're testing um, and, but the, 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 and the beta clients, uh, they get it. So I want to hear about destiny two for you guys. Cause you know, that for me, it's like, Oh, cool. Gameplay. Cool. Like, what what are they going to have? There's going to be all these new features. Like, what are you guys thinking right now with destiny two, you know, six to eight months out? Yeah. I mean, we're st- like, you know, we're still investing in destiny one. You know, especially with weapon rankings and additional features in DIM. Uh, you know, we're going to be here as long as players are here. Sure. Um, but then looking forward towards Destiny 2, um, we have no idea. And so <laughs> what, what we're trying to do as app developers is invest in the features of DIM that would port very easily. So subsystems uh, within the app, like authentication, um, transferring items essentially you know, like you know how do we uh handle asynchronous feature asynchronous meaning how do we do things in parallel um because you can you know you can queue up moves and how do we handle those queues so we're definitely looking at all of the features within the app uh and we're also refining our uh, approach towards responsive right now dim works great on tablets and desktops we never got around to getting it to work on mobile phones uh efficiently um, and so uh, for for Destiny 2, the expectation is it's going to be uh, a kind of a ground up experience, brand, you know, brand new uh, client. And that new client will be um, mobile friendly. <laughs> so nice. you can use your web browser cool. on your phone. We don't plan on making apps. So no iPhone or Android apps. You can just use Chrome and Safari and you know, go to DIM. Zorth, what about you? What's your biggest uh, want or wish for for D2? I guess it could be also related to longest distance kills if you wanted it to be too. Yeah. Anything you're, anything you're looking forward to? I'm really hoping they have snipers in D2. Like they got <laughs> <laughs> Oh, me too. <laughs> uh, I'm, I mean, so there's two parts to it. Obviously, there's the game part and my site part. For the, for the site part, I'm ready to, you know rebuild and fix things that I thought I did wrong or I, you know, I'm, I know more now I'm better now. So I'm excited for a fresh start and being able to do that. Um, as far as the game, I'm excited for, you know, kind of the maybe not so great reviews people gave when D one came out and they left the game. I'm ready for the fresh start in the game, get people back in it. Um, Bungie being able to, release content more often better content more content more often so that i can yeah. continue to play and i'm not um, hitting these walls where i'm repeating things and i have nothing to do but pvp so i, I that's what i'm most excited for i guess is the uh, what i thought destiny one would probably be it was just like a constant iteration of new content open world so i hope that they continue to build upon that that's what i'm most excited for absolutely really really big things coming at least i hope going to be very cool. But guys, uh, thank you both so much for coming on. And thank you especially for giving me and so many other people uh, so much to do while I am at work reading (laughs) 
tweets and Reddit posts about people enjoying Destiny while I'm there, and I'm going, all right, we're doing Wrath of the Machine tonight. Time to set up my loadout. I'll have everything already equipped by the time I get home and log on. Or like, oh, how are my assists doing? Oh, I have a really, really high KD with assists, but I need to get my KD up there. Uh, you guys give give life to this game um, in ways that the game can't even do itself. So we really appreciate that. It's our pleasure. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Thank you. So if you if you don't know where to go at this point, <laughs> guys, if uh, if they need if they need if they don't have these apps and they haven't been to your sites, uh, give us a final plug. Where can they find your stuff on the internet? Goose, what about you? Well, destinyitemmanager.com is the website where you can get our Chrome extension and the uh, website address for our apps. And you can visit us on Twitter at this is dim. Zorth. Yeah, we are at destinytracker.com. Um, we got a content team working hard on our Twitch. It's uh, twitch.tv slash destinytrack. We got a, a YouTube team. We got, we're on Twitter all the time. So just hit us up. We're out there. Awesome. Awesome. Guys, thanks again. Yeah, thanks thank for you. coming on the show. Thank you. Glad to be here. Hey, uh, Andrew, uh, I don't know if the microphone is me just is picking up on me dabbing all of the blood away from my face every five minutes this interview. But if it does, could you could you cut that out? That was my outro bit. Sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> just put that. Just put that, just yeah. put that. Yeah, just put that in there, Andrew. There you go. <laughs> they know right. where to find us. They know where to find us. Well, I'm going to get us out of here. We're all in bad shape. <laughs> I got a bad back. Birds is bleeding out of his face, so send him your best wishes on the space internet over on Twitter, Crucible Radio, and at Famous Birds. I'm Swainstash underscore CR. That's, you know, you can see me pointing. That's Bones underscore CR. Give us a follow. We're gonna, we're gonna be posting lots of neat stuff coming up. Some partnerships we're working on. Some uh, events coming up that we're, uh, we're, we're excited for. And, uh, yeah, just look for a uh, sick memes too. <laughs> yeah. That's where, that's that really why you follow us. It's the sick. Memes. Well, anyway, uh, love you guys. Catch y'all next week. See ya. Bye. 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 What's up, everyone? Bones here. Do you like podcasts? Do you like chill conversation? Well, me and my co-hosts Swain and Birds put out a bonus podcast every month on Patreon. If you want to check it out and be a part of more awesome stuff, head over to patreon.com slash crucibleradio and join the squad. See you there.